Hello, John here again. Now this is going to be a new set of videos purely based around the IDE that I'm using to develop programs on the Commodore set of uh, systems. And this, I this IDE is called CBM Pro Studio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this uh, piece of software bit by bit and what we're going to do is we're going to explore each section uh, in, in, in depth. Um, a lot of people use this piece of software but when I'm not too sure and the developer Arthur is not too sure if if people uh, know about all the func hidden functions and functions that are there um, because of all the questions that so I thought I would do a set of videos just dedicated to this piece of software and using the 64 as the base for doing the programming so if we open the program this is this is what we are presented with when we when we start the the software in some respects this is just like a standard integrated development environment for example if we use uh, Visual Studio as an example, so here's Visual Studio, and as you can see, we've got the title, uh, the menu bar, the tool t uh, the toolbar, and then we have the assets system here. So in here would be controls and DLLs and stuff like that. Down here is where you get your bug debugging information, uh, watching information, and stuff like that. Here is your Solution Explorer, so you can see all the files and assets in the pro. And here is your development environment here. PR, uh, CBM PRG Studio is just the, it's, it's a similar format, but the, the the project explorer is on this side. We have our debugging system here. We have our assets, but in this case, it will be labels, variables, and stuff like that here and this is where our development environment is so it allows you to in what in one space in one piece of software um, develop debug deploy and test in one space now what we're going to concentrate on to start with is the project area what you can do what is the project for for what can we do with it and how can we do uh, how we we can do with it now to start off there's two ways of creating a new project you can create a new project just by hitting create new project and just fill out the details and we'll do that just for this one so we're going to say we're going to do a commodore 64 it's going to be called example number one we're going to start it at that location in basic and it's going to be stored in this location on my hard drive so I need to create a new directory I'll call it example there we go it's going to be example number one We'll click next and it tells us, gives us an overview, and we click create. And there you go, it's created it. And what it's done, it's created a, a project file where it allows us to group all the different files that are required for that project. So there's a branch where we can put all the basic files, so anything that's basic, developed in basic, can be put in there. This is a uh, a folder for putting all the assembly code same with the character sets so when we're defining our own character sets we can have them there defining our own sprites we can have them there and designing screen layouts and all those different file types we will go in more detail when we uh, in, in later on later videos but that is the first way of building an example so I'm going to save that because I'm going to open it up later on save project and then I'm going to close it because there are other ways 
of creating projects. Like you can specifically say create me an assembler project. So let's do that. So here we go. So it's saying the target is the Commodore 64, which is right. So project name, we're going to call it example number 02 assembler. That the main assembler is going to be contained within this program here. We want some sprite information that's going to be contained within this program here. We want some character data, which is going to be contained in this file there. And this is example number two for the first tutorial on CBM Proj Studio. Click OK. And what it's done, it's actually created a project with preloaded files. So we've got the main assembly here. If we double click the character set, it goes straight into the character set editor. And if we double click the sprite, it goes straight into the sprite editor. And like I said before, um, we will go into these in a lot more detail in uh, later videos. So that's a machine code pro project. So if I save that project and then close it we can also create a basic one and so here we go same things again so it's example number three basic and this time it's going to create a main.basic same sprite file and same characters and we can add another comment example number three auto generation of basic project click OK and there we go done exactly the same thing again but this time it's created a basic file so I'm going to save that and close it now we've created those files the way you can load them back up there's two ways you can load existing project here or you can get them from your recent yeah so we're going to load existing project and I'm going to load the basic one number three because I want to show you a cool piece of functionality and this is what we call importing so we're going to import a basic program because I've got a basic program the, the projects a basic program and I've got another basic program one on so here we go so I'm going to search for this basic program so it's on this I think it's on that drive there we go and it's called 64 bank account click open and what this does it looks at the PRG file so that was a proper Commodore 64 PRG file that was on my floppy disk that I've loaded onto the machine and then imported it straight into CB, uh, CBM PRG Studio and this is exactly how it's meant to look so all this is the program in its entirety and what it's done is it's looked at the text and is and it's done it, it's done its own metadata and we'll go into that in more detail in a later video so you don't have the commodore characters in the development environment we have this these meta uh, data points and stuff like that but as you can see it's loaded it all in now this is the cut down version of my bank account but it did it but what I can do is I can see if I can import the big one so I'll go back and see if I can find the big one so that was that one and can I find big one now that could be there 24 number 9 there we go so I'm just loading that up and there we go and this is the bigger one because this one has machine code actually embedded inside of it so these data statements are for machine code so it's a mixture of a basic program and machine code and this this um, bank program used to run my finances in the 1980s 
where life was so much simpler. But there we go, and it's, and it's quite a big one as well. And I could run this if I wanted to in the Vice emulator, but uh, that'll be a later later video because I want to I want to talk about basic programming and stuff. I want to uh, and do some videos on programs that I've written and how they work and stuff like that. But we can also import binary files and sequential files. Now a binary file I think is uh, an assembler file or a character file or a sprite file but I haven't got any of those at the moment but uh, we will uh, eventually we will get some. But another thing that that Arthur put in here was the ability that if you didn't know what to do, you could actually load an example. So we've created a basic uh, project here. And if you go down to sample programs, here we go. We've got some basic programs. So we've got some, you know, some basic programs. And I think these are actually out of the uh, programmer's reference guide, I think it was. And it's uh, so if, let's just load one right the plotter so okay there you go so it's loaded the plotter programming there it is and this is it and it's a small program well, let's run it in the emulator and see what happens here we go so it's wiping out memory oh yeah and it just, and I know why that doesn't work because of this bad example. Oh well, let's try another one. Yeah, there's a machine code part to that program, so we need to uh, load that up. But I'll pick another one. Let's pick another one. Uh, da, 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 da. Shoot. There we go. So we'll just run this and see what that one does. I think this one makes noises. There we go. So that's just making noises in the SID chip, like shooting noises. But if we list, there you go. So rem shooting for L equals that to that, poke, S. And if we just move it to one side, there you go. Rem shooting for L equals that to that, blah, blah, blah. And so it's exactly the same. So if I close the emulator now. And we can edit this and change it because it's now added as part of our project. It's not it's not editing the sample file. Um, we can also do it for assemblies as well. So if we go into assembly programs, we can do line of fire, for example. So that should then go into, here we go. So it's gone into our assembler area. And if I tell it to send it to the studio, there we go. So just move it so you can see it. It's just shooting lines left, right, and center from the center of the screen. Pretty clever. And this is the beauty of uh, having a project. You can have many, many files in a project, all doing different things. And then you could build them all at the s in all in the same time, yeah. So when you've got all your files, if you want to a quick way of getting there, you just do open containing folder, and that takes you straight to the project folder itself. And it's a it's very <coughs> it's a very quick way of uh, finding out where your stuff is. You can also open a command line. So we can. O this is open basically a uh, DOS box. There's a used to be so where you can run um, DOS um, elements and stuff like that. And that's that's a nice feature. We can also copy the full path. And if I run Notepad and paste it into there, that is the path where that fo pro uh, project exists. So I'm hoping that this has been an informative look at how to do how to build projects within CBM uh, Proj Studio 
and how to handle your files and we'll go into the other ones in a bit more detail okay well thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later take care bye